Good morning, everybody. It's Saturday morning. It's time to embroider. So uh, our topic today is, is problems you have with embroidering small letters. A lot of us um, will be asked to do people's logos and for shirts and stuff, and they always tend to give you too much, le too many letters. They want it too small because they don't. What it is is that they don't understand. Is is when they see their logo in print. It's using a typeface or a typewriter print or a computer print, and that's not that doesn't lend itself very well to stitches, needles, and thread. It doesn't work really well. And reasons we have limitations uh, as far as is the size of lettering we can do and what people can expect out of our lettering. A lot of times they want, they just want things too small. If, if they can type it on a logo and with a screen print and it works great, why can't you stitch it? Well, that's because um, when you think about it, um, it's the size that's the problem. Thread takes up space, the needle takes up space, and, and it can cause all kinds of problems with small lettering. Big lettering too. You know, <laughs> Lettering isn't the easiest thing. It's what we do a lot. And those of us who don't digitize, uh, those who don't digitize, will oftentimes have software that will give them lettering. So they might want to add lettering, lettering to to something, and resizing capabilities. And we'll talk about that a little, little bit. But the biggest problem, and I wrote a few notes down that you have with small lettering, is that they ask for too small and too many letters to put on a line that is feasible and physically able to do. They'll, and what happens? You end up with thread breaking, thread shredding, holes in fabric. Okay, we'll talk about why that happens. And a lot of times it can be fixed. You know, some of these problems can be fixed and some can't. Uh, you, sometimes you just have to be really realistic with someone saying, you know, really, I'm not going to put, you know, 52 letters in a two-inch space. It's just never going to happen. Uh, and like I said, people are used to seeing their logos in typeface. They're a typeset, and that works. That doesn't work out with needles and thread. Uh, a stitch, in order for it not to tear up fabric. You also have a lot of problem with bobbin thread coming to the top, and we're going to do, if we have time, we'll do a little experiment with some of these stitches uh, to, to help make that better. But a stitch has to be at least one millimeter long in order to be seen. Uh, otherwise, it digs in. And the problem is, is a lot of times the needle's too big, such as um, a letter O. Let's talk about a letter O. In the center of the letter O, if you have a font that is less than, that is, like sometimes we'll see fonts that are for a quarter inch. Well, what happens is that's talking about quarter inch for the uppercase letters. Well, you got lowercase letters and they're usually about an eighth of an inch high. Okay, you start getting into uh, an O. What happens is that, if, say you're using, ah, I got something in my eye. Uh, you're using a 7511 needle, okay? Well, the problem with the center of an O is it may be one millimeter wide. And when it's that small and you're using a 0.75 needle and then you add thread to that, because uh, the thread is, is small too, then what happens is you have no room for the, the center of the O. Because that center O, you need one millimeter for, for it not to tear your fabric. And if you're going 75, by the time you get it on each side, you've got a quarter of a millimeter for fabric. That's it. That's asking for a hole in your fabric right there. It's just going to, and you're not going to see it. It's going to look like a blob. Um, so sometimes that can be corrected if you don't have the ability to, to change the fonts out and you're stuck. Then what you might want to do is go to a thinner weight thread. Um, most embroidery thread is a 40 weight, which is means it's 0.4 millimeters. Okay, okay, 0.4 mil, mil, approximately. You know, there's there's no industry standard in thread, mind you. But you have the O, so you have your point. You're you're leaving almost a half a mil, half a millimeter there, and a half a millimeter on the other side, 
with a middle needle in the mortar in the middle you're not going to see it it's going to cause a hole you add the thread the needle to it you know you might want to go down to a smaller needle but in order to use a smaller needle like a size 9 or a 10 you're going to have to change your thread and a lot of times i will use bobbin thread in the needle as well as in the bobbin and the bobbin thread is usually a 60 weight so it's a lot thinner which is embroidery bobbin thread is 60 weight for most machines and so what happens is um, it only comes in black and white if you want colors I would suggest using bottom line thread by superior threads that is a uh, 60 weight thread it's not as shiny as embroidery thread but it will work uh, to give you the, now and the downside to that is sometimes those zigzag stitches are a little too sparse and you might have to increase the density of them so like yeah so bottom line you got to test things okay uh, first of all you also need to make sure that your lettering is is appropriate for or your fabric is appropriate to do lettering it's easier to do lettering on uh, a stable fabric like a woven than it is on a knit knit is very unstable yet that's what we want to use all the time so uh, I would recommend um, that you use a topping a water soluble topping whenever you're doing small lettering no matter what also with the needle it, embroidery needles are a universal point for the most part not all of them but most of them are have a universal point which means that they are neither a sharp nor are they a, a ball point when you're doing teeny tiny lettering on a golf shirt or something or a knit shirt you probably want to sw switch to a size 9 or 10 uh, needle ballpoint needle so it'll keep some of those threads from be yarns from being broken because in a knit it's a yarn and just like when you knit and you drop a stitch and you get a run that can happen with small lettering <laughs> there was a class I took one time and we're talking God, nearly like 16 17 years ago at the expo it was called all I wanted to know about embroidery I learned from smaller lettering because if there's going to be a problem in life it's going to be with small lettering it happens all the time yet that's what we want to do a lot of we do quilt labels that's small lettering and like yeah you know so and not all small lettering is 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 good lettering so like I said sometimes if you're doing really small lettering like a quarter inch or smaller actually you shouldn't do smaller than a quarter inch you're asking for problems you need to talk to your customer or saying saying really we can't do this you know hundred or fifty letters in a, in a small two inch space that's never going to happen um, and sometimes you might have to digitize your own font which means you're going to go stitch by stitch by stitch digitizing your own because uh, very few people do very do decent small lettering uh, at least they digitize the small lettering um, there are some small lettering built into some of the machines and we'll talk about that in a little while later too so anyway um, like I said oh first for a uh, woven to get a small letter a uh, small needle like a size 10 you might want to go to a microtex needle and that is a sharp because remember an embroidery needle is usually has a universal point which means it's a hybrid it's neither ballpoint or a sharp it's sort of a sharp with a slightly rounded tip okay so um you want to try to keep your letters fonts to a quarter inch and they're talking about uppercase letters not your small letters when they say they have a four millimeter or five millimeter length uh, they're talking about the capital letters which means those are eighth of an inch you're, you're talking about eighth of an inch small letter and that's going to be almost impossible to see especially an O and A or B an S and an E they all look like a glob they don't even look like letters okay now your fabric again the more stable your fabric is the better that lettering is going to turn out um, I recommend even with knits is to use this stuff oh, it's backwards but it says it's backwards here because I've got the camera so I can see what I'm doing it's terial magic it's like super spray starch and you spray I even spray the knits with it now be careful of some of the colors 
I have problems with gray. I don't know what's in gray dye, but gray tends to stain. Purple tends to stain. Test it. Always test it on a corner, make sure it doesn't stain. And sometimes it'll it'll stain while it's drying, but it will wash out and go back to its regular color. So test always test stuff. Um, and this is great. Uh, you can use spray starch to help stabilize your fabric, but I like Terial Magic because it's like six, seven layers of spray starch with just one. You just spray it lightly and press it dry, and it's just fine. Uh, and it, I, this one says it was $14.99 for this package, for this size package. I don't know how much it is now because I haven't bought a package of it in a long time. I bought this one, oh, about six years ago. I just keep buying refills and refilling it. So I, I don't know how much in individual ones, but they're great. They're great. You'll love that stuff. It's great on just about any, any kind of cotton. If you're doing quilting and cotton fabrics, always spray your stuff with, with that Terriel Magic and your embroidery comes out a lot better. You'll get a lot less stretching and pulling and pushing and doing all puckering and all that mess. Okay, because you will get a lot more puckering with small lettering too. Um, so, uh, like I said, the, also, there's a lot of tension issues when dealing with small lettering. The problem is, and, and you'll see, because I'm going to use white bobbin thread in my bobbin, the bobbin tends to come up all the time and you want to scream. So you keep fiddling with that top tension and, and it will work on like a straightaway, like an I or a T, and then you go to an S and it comes right back up again. Every time it turns a corner, that bobbin thread comes up and you see little white specks. You have choice, two things to do. Change the same color in the bobbin or get fabric markers and just color the dots. <laughs> so I tend to, and uh, certain things you can do also to help that bobbin thread from coming up and getting a better stitch on the top is that you want to use a topper. You want to use like um, a wash away. This is where I'm going to use a wash away, a wa oh, water soluble topping. I don't like the press away for small lettering because the, that has to be ta removed by putting a hot iron on it. And when you have small lettering, that iron can't get in between the little parts of the letter. And so you have this shininess stuff that you can't get rid of. So I'll use water soluble even on a, on a uh, woven fabric. Why? Is because in order for a thread to be seen, it needs to be one millimeter long. Anything smaller than that, you really can't see it's going to dig in. That forces the thread higher on the fabric so more thread is exposed so you can see it a little bit better. And then you just dab it with water and it washes away. Um, you also need to use the proper stabilizer. With small lettering, don't even try tear away. You're asking for trouble. Do not use a tear away with tiny lettering. My favorite one to use for tiny lettering is this no-show mesh. It's a cutaway. And you're going to have to cut it away when you're done. But it's going to give you better results. And it usually will handle. It... it, it it almost has like a waffle weave on it. So if you're not familiar with with your stabilizers, you want to use a no-show mesh or any kind of cutaway with small lettering. If you've ever seen when it does the dots on the eyes, you know what happens? It digs through a cut tear away and you end up with the whole knot on the back. No lettering on the front, just a big knot on the back. And then when you go, oh yeah, that's not going to work. So use a cutaway with small lettering. Um, of some sort and again use a topper if you need to you can go ahead and um, and and put the same color thread top and bottoms to, to help minimize the appearance now that bobbin thread still coming to the top but you can't see it anymore okay another problem is with the digitized letters themselves um, when you're doing small lettering if you have software don't use the true type fonts because because those aren't going normally will not stitch well in small lettering use the built-in stitches and when you buy the stitch when or when you get these fonts they're digitized they'll they'll be a, it'll tell you a limitation to where you can size them don't size them any smaller than what they what they recommend 
and like if it says that it's only good for between 10 and 15 10 and and 100 millimeters four inches you can't get that down to, to lower than that it's just not going to work one of the reasons it doesn't work is because small lettering is going to work best if it has a particular type of underlay which is a simple running stitch going through the letter you don't want those zigzags because you don't have enough room to do them a simple running stitch will help that thread to stay on the surface of the fabric without digging in so um, and, and be careful who like we buy fonts from people be careful who you buy them from if you want to test see how good of a digitizer they really are or if it's just an amateur like me I consider myself an amateur digitizer I don't consider myself the best at all order something small see how it stitches out uh, you can't fix bad digitizing so you know try it try them out um, a lot of times it's easier to have a professional do your digitized logos for especially with small lettering because he's he or she's going to guarantee that stitching um, at the store we use embroidery Jerry and I think he's EMB I don't remember what I, I call the store they've got the, the list uh, he does decent small lettering and so then they'll fix it if it doesn't stitch right and also you're going to have to tell him what you're stitching it on what type of fabric the size of thread you're going to use and the size of needle you're going to use and he will digitize it accordingly okay um now you can some software like uh, the embrilliance uh, software which was we called it designers gallery <clears throat> you could import fonts so it is a pain in the neck if you buy a font pack that's for say four or five millimeter long four four or five millimeter stitching because you have to bring it in one letter at a time and it takes forever so it's nice to have software like the designers gallery or the Embrilliance, which is what it is called now Embrilliance.com. <clears throat> mind me if you have designers gallery studio not studio if you have designers gallery embroidery works embroidery works uh, every day or and the um, <clears throat> and or the what's it call it advanced or the mass or the mass the designers gallery creator you can use your serial numbers after you download the Embrilliance platform so he Brian developed both of those pieces of software and so he is allowing which I think is wonderful no other company I've ever known has done this once they go out they go out but <clears throat> he says if you have a designers gallery uh, serial number for your software creator embroidery works advanced or every day then you can download his pro he will support that by in just bringing it into the embrilliance in, within the Brilliance, you can buy things called BX files. You can purchase those relatively inexpensive, and there's even a few places where they have free ones. Or a BX file is simply a stitch file, just as PES is, but it allows the software to map that automatically mapped it to a keystroke. Or say if you were putting in five letters before, you'd buy the font pack and you would put in one letter. The BX file allows it to go into your software so that you can just type in the letters and it will put them in. Is it perfect? No. All BX files are not created equally. Some are, they are indeed a stitch file. It is not a vector file. Um, if you have a software which is going to be like Hatch and the Wilcom and the Pulse software they take something called an ESA file and that is a true vic vector art software and so therefore it's a shape so when you size it up or down the shape is changed and it changes the stitch characteristics appropriately okay the ES files are object based in other words it's like a vector artwork and so those will size down and size up easily so 
there's really no limitation on the size of that font. Um, but there, it, it, that requires specialized software. Um, the other thing with BX files not, is the built-in fonts, whether you have palette, what's PE design, Artista software for the Bernina, Masterworks, whatever. The built-in fonts, if you look at them on, on the computer screen, they sort of, you have A, O, whatever. They don't go straight across along the baseline. They sort of go up and down. And that's because in the software, it takes into account pull compensation. And what pull compensation is, is that, let me draw it. Okay. Say I wanted to do this, this column, okay? There's push and pull right here. Okay, what happens is that it goes across and it looks fine on the screen. When you stitch it, what happens is that the thread forces pull it in this way. So what happens is it actually is going to stitch, say like here's, I'll just use this last one. It's actually going to stitch. I can't, I can't try it this way. I can't do this in, in the line is it will stitch in actuality st stitch inside the lines. Pull, uh, pull compensation does is it over stitches. So in other words, it, it, instead of it doing a stitch you think is this wide, it's actually on the computer stitching out here and it draws it in. It also tends to push your fabric out the ends. So if you have it stitching right across here, it's going to tend to push it up that way. This can also help be solved by underlayment, which means that it's going to come up here. Uh, like if you're doing for a knit, you would stitch it with uh, something called a contour, which means it's going to do this inner stitching around this way and down like that. And then what it does is it keeps that fabric from pulling in a little bit. And it also keeps that fabric from pushing out the ends. So that's, that's on the digitizing level. So when it, and so what happens with an O, okay? There's an O. Your stitches are pulling in here, like this, and they're pulling in towards the middle of the letter. So what happens is that if you have an O and a T, okay? See, so yeah, so on the computer, Here's my T. Okay, and they look they look to they look like they're even at the bottom, but when it stitches out in actuality, this fabric is drawn up, this one draws down, and therefore now these are not on the same line. So when you're using a built-in font, a built-in font to your software, whether it be palette, PE design, all those it's going to take in effect this, that it does that. So therefore it's going to sort of offset it a little bit so that when it stitches out, it looks straight across. It's not gonna happen with a BX file because that's a stitch file. It's not gonna happen, what I like to use the least is a true type font. The old masterworks used to use true type fonts, which are fonts that are resident on your computer and it would turn it into raster file which is bitmap you know um, it doesn't turn it into a vector file so therefore when you see an O when it's a true type font it's really squares little tiny squares like that and therefore it can give you this stair steppy look as it goes around the curve especially if you decide to size it up make it bigger when it gets smaller, it's gonna break needles because <laughs> it's it just it's gonna keep true to that little square. It's not a vector is a mathematical formula that defines that outline. So as you make it bigger or smaller, that outline that goes around the outline smoothly. And it's probably a lot more than you want to know. Um, if you're doing your own digitizing, 
just put in a single run in through the center of the letter and that usually will work just fine. That also helps raise the lettering a little bit so that it goes over top. So it ra raises higher on the fabric. Okay, um, so most, fab most fonts on the market, 90% of all fonts on the market are digitized between one half inch and one inch high. And you try to make them smaller than that and it doesn't work out. Uh, so be, be careful. You always test it. You know, always test it. Um, let's see. Like I said, in the fabrics, den you'll notice with the fabrics, drill cloth or denim, small lettering works out beautifully. So if, they send, if you're getting something digitized and they send it back to you on denim, buyer beware. If you're going to put on a t-shirt, they're not going to look the same. Ask them when you're having something digitized to have it digitized on the fabric and the sample on the same fabric that you're going to be using, even if you have to send them the fabric to test it. So, uh, and like I said, you always use your towel. Another thing you can help small lettering look better is to slow your machine down. What happens when it goes too fast? That fabric tends, that, that thread tends to stretch a little bit. Therefore, that causes that pull on that fabric even worse. Because whenever you do a satin stitch, the forces pull in. Small lettering, those forces can get rather strong, and that's when it tears your fabric, is when it's too small and you need at least a millimeter of fabric between the elements of a letter for it not to rip it. Because how many of you tried to take out small lettering and you think you've ruined it because you, you hit it with the seam ripper trying to take it out or the, the stitch eraser trying to take it out and you're thinking it's because you did it. No, you didn't. It's digitized, it's too small, and the, just the stitching process alone is going to destroy the fabric. Okay. Um, now, if you're going to be using the 60 weight thread, you want to, you might have to increase the density of that stitching. In other words, test it out. Also, no, all fonts are not created the same. Small lettering is not going to work if you've got a, 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 what they call a serif font. And what a serif font is, is like, here's my T. It would be, if I can draw them. These little out pockets are called serifs. And then sometimes you'll have some lettering that have little curly cues. And they'll do this, like script lettering. Sometimes those don't turn out because they don't work well in small lettering. So not all fonts are going to work on small lettering. A block font will work the best. Uh, anything that's a chunky type thing, it, it will and it won't, okay? Um, a block letter works the best. A slim block for me works pretty well for small lettering too. Where did I learn all this stuff? John Deere. Who else? <laughs> He's a, uh, he is an absolutely wonderful teacher and I've taken his classes for years and years and years and I will never ever be a tenth of the digitizer he is. He's the one that, that taught me on Masterworks, which is why I'm hanging on to this really old computer Right there. There it is. This old thing. My old Toshiba. I'm not getting rid of that. It doesn't go on the internet anymore. It's too fragile. But it has my masterworks, which is no longer supported. When I can't get it working, I'll, I don't know what I'll do. <laughs> I have Creator on here as well. Not as happy with I mean, it, it's not masterworks. It's good, but it's not masterworks. This one is my masterworks. Okay. And I've got mine in inches, although I tend to digitize in in uh, millimeters. So actually, I'll probably go to my preferences. And when I go away, there we go. Um, preferences, I want to change to millimeters. Where is it? It's in here somewhere. Units. Metric. Okay. Reason I like it, I like it to give me the information in metric because I'm I'm always watching out for that one and a half inch uh, or that the size of the font so that I don't make it too small. Okay, so I'm going to pick a text 
and they pretty much work the same. I'll do lettering in one than the other, and I'm going to, it will remember what I did last. Okay, it's actually on the one that I want. Okay, I'm going to change my hoop. I like to change my hoop to whatever size I am using, but I want to make it smaller. I can go smaller, just not bigger, because I don't want this too big. But I can visualize. Okay, here it's telling me it's 30 millimeters high, which is too big. Way too big. It is 1 and 1 18. It's hard to see this, but it's 1 and 1 18th 1 of an inch high. So it's too high. I want this to be a quarter of an inch. 0.25. Apply. Okay, now it's tiny. But it is about, it is indeed, here it's telling me it's 1.8, it's 2.2 inches high. And we're going to just, I'm going to move this one up. Okay, I'm going to do another one in a different font. And I'll move this over here. And I want to change this to a different font. And that one was called Primer Print. And unfortunately, this is the one I like to use for my uh, quilt labels because it is just a running stitch. These were did. It's a it's a built-in font to that. But I'm going to pick another one. Say block small. Okay, let's do this small script one at 0.5 millimeters, and we will. And in the question, whether it's um, over here over here it's telling me this question mark I can click on that and it's telling me how big or how small I can make this and have it still work out and this one says that it can go 0.2 inches which is a little bit less than a quarter of an inch and I will I will do that we'll go ahead and, and leave that one at Point two inches and apply and move that here okay and then I'll try the same thing with a block I'll try a block and you can you can try them out this one says it's good up to five millimeters which is about it which is in see that one only goes to a half an inch that's as small as we can get that one it's telling me here I can't get that one any smaller than a little bit bigger than a half an inch so I don't want to use that so let's try another one um, ah, back here Let's see what that one does. Block two. Okay, I can do that one at at that same uh, tininess, point two, which is about a quarter of an inch. Make it two five. Apply and scoot it down, and we'll stitch all three of these out. Alrighty, I'm just going to save those file and save as and change that to come on put it in that disk and I'm going to make a folder AAA so I can find it on a PES file so it's ready to stitch it saved it and we'll stitch that. Now let's do another set in. This is now Designer's Gallery Creator. Okay, now we're in Designer's Gallery Creator. And we'll put on here small. Or no, whatever what I had was my text, right? So we can compare what we have. Text and I can set this one is is easy to set the height as the other one is 
So I'm going to hit apply. Uh, let's see. What do we have? If it has any small ones. Oh, I'll just use a block. Okay, and its size is one half inch, so I want to make it smaller. Actually, here I'm going to my height 0.25. There. Okay. <laughs> I can tell you right now that's not going to work. Select it and move it up. And let's pick another font. And this is making me type it every time. And let's see what else we can find. Now, when I'm looking at the fonts, and this is in, Cre in the Creator or the Embrilliance, this works the same. It's showing me what it's going to look like. And so I can scroll up and down, and it's showing me Actually, on the screen, it's showing me what it's going to look like at that size, at, at its natural size. So I'm look. What I'm looking for is something relatively thin, without a lot. Of, that wouldn't work. That wouldn't work. Well, that might work. That one might work. Because they're all, but they're all basically capital letters. Um. That wouldn't work. See a font like that? That wouldn't work very well. That definitely wouldn't work. The ones with the serifs I want to stay away from. A lot of times they'll bring you this logo and I want this exact logo. Well, yeah, no. For one thing, that's going to cost to have done. Let's see. I'm looking for something small. Let's try this script. And again, I can click on the... And it's telling me how big I can get it. 15 millimeters. See, it's telling me when I hit the question mark, that's a little too big. We want something smaller. So, no. So, let's find something else. This is, this one seems to be a little more tedious. Ah, we can go down here. Let's see. And I wish this one would identify what, what works well in small letters and what doesn't. Let's try Penny. Penny, I think, works. Okay, I'm going to move this to the middle, and we're going to save this one. File, save stitch file as... Okay, and call this one... B, B, B. Okay, and now and close that. And then let me dig out my file. There's Lily's picture. And eject. <laughs> okay, let's go over to the computer now. Or to the sewing machine. Load this in. And A A A. I have two. Now the this um this is the first one we did. Let's stitch these out and just see what they look like. I'm gonna leave white in the bobbin. And I'm going to use regular thread. Here. And I'm using a size 11 needle. Don't use a 14, even if your fabric is thick, it's not going to work. Too big of a hole. 
Go ahead and move the design all the way to the top. So we can stitch in more than one. Okay, like this one is that primer print. <laughs> See, even this is still pretty big. It's still pretty big less. Now notice, it isn't, it isn't cutting the jump stitches. And the reason is, is because it is less than a quarter of an inch between the letters. Oh, maybe I've turned it off. Why didn't you cut the jump stitch? Yeah. Let me hit my settings page and see what I did. Ah. I had turned it off, that's why. I must have been doing some... Oh, I was quilting on here before, so therefore it didn't cut. This should cut. Okay, there's that second one and this isn't very small lettering we are at a quarter of an inch and that's it still not small chair across. <laughs> Again, I'm doing these on a woven fabric, so they are turning out to look decent. Let's see what this one is. These are all the same size. That looks a lot bigger than a quarter of an inch to me, though. <laughs> Also notice these are all capital letters. I'll just let it do the E and then we'll go on to the next one. And that lettering is actually turning out really well, but again, it's not real tiny lettering. And that's actually turning out really well. These are all resident fonts. Those are resident within, those are digitized for embroidery. They're not a true type font. Okay. And let's switch to this second one. Room to play. Okay, and I'm stitching out that second set. Now this is the one from, from Creator or in Brilliance. And this is a lot smaller. Okay. 
It's still not doing a bad job. Let's see what it does on this E, because this is where you're going to see the messes if it make, if it is on this E. If I were using <clears throat> a cutaway stabilizer, what will happen is this could possibly dig a hole through it, and now it's ruined. You can usually float a piece, a patch of stabilizer underneath of it and keep going. That's one way. Let's take a good look at that E. Look at that blob. That looks, whoops, wrong way. That, that E looks terrible. See, it's a blob, <laughs> okay? Yeah, I'm not liking that at all. <laughs> That's the top one. Well, the other one's probably going to look about the same. That was using a different font. Another thing I didn't do is I did not slow down my machine. Sometimes, uh, and I'm going to take, we'll take a close look at it to see if we see bobbin thread coming up. And you know what? If I'm doing this in real life for something I need to have, that bobbin thread is guaranteed to, sh to show up. But because I want it to come up today, it doesn't look like it's coming up. Go figure. That's a glob. I don't like that either. Does anyone have any questions or what kind of problems are you having with small lettering? And again, I'm not using a topper on this. It would turn out better with a topper. I think we got an idea. Now, one thing I do see here is I see some jagged edges. Again, these are resident fonts. They are not true type fonts or or uh, BX fonts. Actually, let's stop this now, and I'm going to come down and I'm going to change that thread, and we'll st we'll do that first one again. I'm just going to plus or minus and go back to the beginning, and okay, and move it down. Okay, I'm going to change the bobbin, change from the 40 weight thread to the 60 weight thread. And I'm just using a bobbin, because this is black. See, I have it, where are you? It's set on the vertical spool pen. And I have it going up to the thread tree into the hook here, the little slot there, and then into the machine. Okay, so now I'm going to stitch that, at least that first one, again. Let's see what it does with the smaller lettering, or with the smaller thread. There we go. Well, the M looks a little crisper if you compare it to the one above. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to kick the tripod. True test is what that E is gonna look like. Because this is a quarter of an inch. It looks a little better. No. It's a little more distinct, but it's also a little more zigzaggy.
let's see what we can do with the built-in fonts. Well, let's take a look at this. Really close. All right. That one is, see that E is just a glob. It's a little better there, but it might look better if I change to a smaller needle. Still not, I mean, it's better, but not good. Like I said, here's the sm problem with small lettering. And I don't know if you can see through it. See the law that light showing through? And what that is, is that is the light showing through. It's too big of a hole. This will work a lot better, but I have to switch to another needle. And I don't think I've got any nines up here. It might be downstairs somewhere. So yeah, I'm not as crazy. So anyway, let's see what the what the built-in fonts that the machine give us does. So let's go get smaller. And let's look and see what we've got available on this machine. I'm going to go to embroidery. I'm going to go to lettering. And these two at the bottom are are uh, is built in lettering so and these are small fonts and let's see how small they are so I'm gonna go my 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 where's the Y Y it's an alphabet and then the space and t -t 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 -e. I'm looking for a keyboard and I have to think the alphabet every time I do this. Set. Okay. And move it up some. And I'll do the next one. Okay. And add another letter and we'll do that second letter. Okay, and now we will embroider this, the bottom, okay, change to regular 40 weight thread, all right, let's see what these two look like, these are the built into the machine, and hopefully these should work the best. Are we done? No. Yeah, wait. It's thinking. Okay. Let's see what these look like. These are the two that are built into most of the machines. Okay. Um, other than the jump stitches, that actually looks pretty good. What do you think? How slow is my machine? I don't know. Let me see. 600. I do most of my lettering at 600. I don't take it to full speed because that's when I have problems with the bobbin coming through the top. And that is using, well, my tension is probably a little off because I don't see any white. And I have white in the machine. And I don't, I do see white here, which is good on this one. Which meant things were better balanced on that, on the last one. So those don't look too bad. Actually, I do like the way that one looks the bo at the bottom. Now, cutting the jump stitches can be a little hard with these little teeny tiny jump stitches. These crazy little scissors are expensive. It's about 20 bucks, but they're well worth their money. Let me take it out of the package. They're called, it's called a side hopper. That's what the package looks like. And I think we have them at the store. I know we did at one time. I don't know if they still are there, but if not, Renee will be happy, and BJ will be happy to order them for you. And so what you do is you go underneath and push against one edge and squeeze 
and then you can it should trap it and cut it yeah sometimes I'll take a tweezer the other side I can't grab it there it is grab it and got it no I missed it there and it cut it really close if you can give it some tension pull it up a little bit be when you cut the jump stitch then it cuts clean I don't cut the jump stitches on the back unless they're causing a problem if they're in the way or I can see them pulling like this kind of jump stitch I would put I would do on the back and see this will get these little bits and this one I can just grab so it's good so anyway thank you so much for watching my watching our Facebook live and you can watch it again pick out the parts you like if you have any questions send, shoot me an email at waltzquilt at yahoo.com and I uh, will see you again Tuesday night we're going to be finishing up our quilt as you go machine quilted background fills table runner okay you guys take it easy and you guys have a great weekend and I'll see you guys next week bye